What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're talking about the V20. Now this phone was announced a little while back, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of hype around it lately. LG has been moving forward pretty quickly with improvements to their flagship lineup over the last year, but is it enough to keep their smartphone division afloat? As for specs, the LG V20 is rocking a Snapdragon 820 processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, a removable 3200 milliamp hour battery, and 32 or 64 gigabytes of storage with micro SD card expansion, up to 256 gigabytes. Around the front, you'll find a very vivid 5.7 inch IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440. And let me tell you, the display here looks fantastic and really shines in color and brightness. As for the design, this is a very different beast from last year's V10 and takes more design cues from the G5. We have a nice all aluminum build this time around and it's a tad slippery thanks to that slick metal, but overall, I'm happy with the design here. It's not setting any trends, but I'm glad that the V20 looks better than its predecessor, at least in my opinion. And there's also a fingerprint sensor around the backside, which works reliably as well. Oh, and you may have noticed that other smaller secondary display at the top of the device. Well, it was present on the V10 and it does the exact same thing here. It's cool, but nothing necessary, though it will provide shortcuts to apps and show notifications and it's fully customizable. But again, I just don't think it's a necessary thing to have in my opinion. It hasn't really provided a lot of benefit to me. As mentioned, the battery is removable here, which is a big win for a lot of people, but the design allows for this with a small button on the side of the V20 that will easily pop off the back cover and allow access to the SIM card and micro SD card slots along with that battery. And just in case you ever feel like swapping it out, you have that option, which is great. Camera performance is one area that LG claims to excel in with the V20. So there are dual rear cameras here that work similarly to the G5. The main camera is a 16 megapixel shooter with an f1.8 aperture, optical image stabilization, and 4K video recording, while the secondary camera sports an 8 megapixel sensor with an f2.4 aperture and a much wider angle. Obviously, the second wide angle camera isn't as good as the main camera, but it's nice to have that option and it can easily be switched to using the two buttons at the top of the viewfinder. There's a pretty nifty manual mode here as well for photo and video, which is always a nice thing to have around, and there's also a 5 megapixel front facing camera, but ain't no nobody got time for that. Image quality isn't too far off from the LG G5, and that's to say that this isn't the best camera on a smartphone. It's tough competition in the world with heavy hitters like the Galaxy Note 7, iPhone 7, and even lower priced options like the Axon 7. Either way, if you want to check out a full resolution image gallery for yourself, I will leave a link in the description. But let me know what you think about the V20's camera in the comments section below. In regards to performance, here's the deal. This thing is packing everything you need to be a snappy performance. Former. With a processor and RAM combo here, you should have no problems, at least in my testing. But it's important to note that this V20 is a preview device and not a retail version, so performance may vary in the final production models. But like I said, I've had no issues here. The V20 is also running Android 7.0 Nougat as well, which is a nice added bonus. So you'll get to enjoy all of the new features that Android has to offer. Overall though, this is LG's skin version of Android Nougat. And while it's light, it's still LG skin, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but you can always throw a launcher on it and call it a day. With the V20, LG packed in a quad DAC, which is definitely supposed to improve the audio coming out of the phone, and they sent along a pair of hi-fi earbuds to test it out. Now, I'm no hi-fi guy, but the DAC in here sounds great to my ears. I've been streaming with Tidal and comparing it to lower grade sources, and the V20's DAC is definitely a win, but the sound is always somewhat subjective. I mean, different people are going to hear different things, but hey, at least they included a headphone jack, right? As for battery life, I can only comment on my personal use as this is a preview unit, but it's been good. I've had no problems making it through a day, but I will hold my thoughts on specific battery stats with everything until I get my hands on a final unit. And be sure you're following me on Twitter to catch those thoughts in the near future. But with USB Type-C and Quick Charge 3.0, you really shouldn't have any worries in the battery department. So let's answer this question, is the V20 a flop? Well, it's obviously not out yet, and the little hype this phone had before its announcement is quickly fading. It's also a very niche phone which caters to audiophiles and people who love photography and video. Now, I don't think LG is going to sell millions of V20s. Assuming this phone will be priced as a flagship, it's going to be a hard sell unless you're a diehard LG fan. 
It's a nice phone, but it won't be my first choice if I were paying anywhere over 500 bucks for a smartphone. But let me know what you think about the V20 in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thanks again for watching, everyone. This is Dom, and I'll catch you in the next video.